At the end of the last video, we ended up with code that looks like this, but we didn't actually go through and calculate the means of any position, nor the upper nor lower bounds of the confidence interval for any position. So we're going to do that here in this video. Do the actual calculations that this plot is showcasing. So what I'm going to do is just pull up the code that we developed for the two sample t-test calculations, because it turns out the code here is nearly identical. So we're going to load in the baseball data set. We're going to load the library dplyr, which, which allows us to do this group by and summarize stuff. The only real difference is we need to change the data set and the variable we group by. So now we're going to group by position and the variable for which we're calculating actual means. And with that, we can at least get a new data frame that contains the catcher's mean. Uh, the units are clearly off, but at least it matches the plot. So these units might be in thousands of dollars, something like this. Designated hitters mean is just over 5,000. That seems pretty good. First baseman's mean is just a little bit higher than designated hitters. That seems pretty good. Infielders tend not to make much. That seems pretty good. So now we can take those calculations, load the library ggplot2, and do the same sort of conversion. Anytime we saw the old um, data frame named carnivores, we can replace it with baseball. Anytime we see the old grouping variable, we can replace it with position. and then replace the y-axis variable with salary. And the rest of the code should just work. Now this one looks a little bit different. The violin plots are a little bit skewed, we would call them. We call it skewed to the right. But this is the theoretical plot that we wanted to make. There's just a lot of potential values way off here, way out into the right, at a vastly different scale. So there's a lot of potential values way off to the right in salary, so they're bigger values. So the scale of the plot is on a much larger scale than the distributions for the means themselves. Because of that, we're getting a lot of these long tails from the violin plots. So in this case, I actually don't even like the violin plots on here, though they do have good pedagogical effect, reminding us that the distributions for the original data is a different distribution than for the sample means. And the confidence interval here are representing the distribution for the sample mean.